Isuzu forces Saya at standpoint to go on a date with her. The location turns out to be a Magi Brilliant Park. While roaming around the place, Isuzu introduces Saya to the various attractions and it is apparent that all of them are very unsatisfactory. After going once over the park, Isuzu asks Saya his thoughts about the place, to which he responds very negatively. Just when he's about to leave, Isuzu offers him some croquettes which turn out to be very delicious. Deciding to know who made them, Saya follows Isuzu to meet the manager of the park, who is dressed like a princess, Latifa. She describes the park actors are actually residents of the magical kingdom of Maple Land and if they are not able to get 500,000 customers before July 31st, the park will be shut down. If the park should ever get shut down, everyone who works in it as well as the entire Maple Land kingdom itself will cease to exist forever. Fearing what may happen, she asks Saya for his help by taking over the manager position. In addition to his help, she also tells him that she will give him magical powers by simply kissing him. The next day, Saya realizes he has the power to read people's minds. Isuzu again takes him to the park where they proceed to meet some people from Amiji Development. They're the ones who would take over the park once the time expires. One of them recognizes Saya and tells him not to get close to the losers in the park or he too will become one. In the park, an assembly is held where the Princess Latifa announces the park will be closed in three months. Saya returns to them and announces that he will save them, but later when he's alone with Isuzu in Latvia, he says that he just claimed to raise everyone's spirits. Saya makes an announcement for cast workers, saying that the park will be closed for a day due to repairs. When Moffle hits an annoying guest, Isuzu attacks the guest and his friends with which cause memory loss. Salama records the fight with her cell phone. Saya records a promotional video with the Elementario Fairies, Latifa, and Isuzu wearing beachwear, but it does not get as many views as expected. Then he uploaded an edited video of the fight, which got many hits and as a result gave many views to the PV uploaded beforehand. Thanks to Saya's flawless management, the park's efficiency and visitor count is increasing. When informed by Isuzu that Mafuyu, Makaren, and Tarami have some complaints, he decides to let her deal with them instead. But the Elementario fairies show him that instead of looking for a compromise, Isuzu just ends the discussion by threatening them with her weapon. Saya then scolds Isuzu for her behavior, creating a divide between them. And the next day, Latvia asks Saya to ride the Ferris wheel with her, and on the occasion, it is revealed that he has a fear of heights. When comforted by her, Saya has the feeling that they have met before. The Magi Brilliant Park has used all its savings, and there is no money left to keep it running. However, Moffa remembers about their friend Dornell who went missing after searching for treasure in an abandoned area of the park, and Saya, Isuzu, Makaren, Terumi, and Moffa leave to investigate while facing several traps along the way. Isuzu and Makaren get separated from the others and discover that Dornell was hidden inside the cave all this time, indulging in several hobbies. While Saya and the others confront Rubrum, the Red Dragon, they learn that Rubrum and the Diggeries, a group of mole-like fairies, were running away from a tyrannical empire and given shelter in the park. With the park short on staff, Syed decides to hold a job interview for new workers, and Isuzu gets herself in serious trouble when she unknowingly eats a fruit that forces her to always tell her mind, leaving her in fear of revealing her true feelings for him. Her troubles are worsened when three of the female applicants are the ones she sees in her dreams the previous night, causing her to think that they will either like Saya or replace her as his assistant and secretary. The park is on alert when a group of pirates from Maple Land appears to cause havoc, with Isuzu, Latifa, Mafa, Makaren, and the elementary of fairies in their custody. It is up to Saya and the others to make a stand against the pirates and rescue them all without having the guests realize that it is not an act. Saya gets a summer cold but he can't afford to skip school due to his earlier absences. 
Sento, Macaron, Tirami, and Mafa were a realistic suit of his body one person per day and attend school, and his instead. On the first day, Isuzu finds a love letter in Kane's shoe locker, but the sender, Suchita Kane, had only mixed up his locker with someone else. As Sento tells her inspiring words, Kaney ends up developing feelings for Kana instead. The next two days end up with crazy incidents due to the mascot's behavior, while the fourth day ends peacefully due to Kaney wearing a suit of a boy to whom Kane is trying to send the letter originally, Kimura, and lying that all the usual acts from Kaney the days before were meant to drive Kane back to Kimura by making her hate Kaney. Having not improved at all with their attraction due to their lack of teamwork, the elementary fairies are invited for dinner with Latifa and unwittingly activate the castle's defense system. Trapped inside the castle, the fairies must reinitialize the system from the inside, but to do so, they must pass a series of trials that demand them to work together. Everyone's doing their best, but it seems impossible to reach the goal of 250,000 visitors. Isuzu tells Kaney why Latifa faints so often, it turns out there's an anonymous draining curse upon the princess. A magi brilliant park was built to keep Latvia alive. Saya recalled that the meeting with the princess when he was young but she looked exactly the same then. Maffel told him that the curse not only affects her health but also resets her memories and physical development every year. With only 10 days left until the deadline, Saya hears from Trikin that he found what he asked him to look for, renewing his hopes. Saya's plan to reach the quota in 10 days involves hosting a soccer match at the park stadium. After convincing the local soccer team to play an important match at the park, Saya informs the cast that for their plan to work, a large and used area of the park grounds must be sold in order to pay for the expenses and solve their financial problems, to which they agree. They then spend the following days making preparations for the match. The final day comes at last, and with all the visitors counted and a few hours left to the deadline, Saya gets in shock knowing that there are only 252 visitors short from reaching the goal. As a last resort, the staff of Amiji Brilliant Park invite all their friends and relatives, reaching the quota in the nick of time. Announcing that it's his last day as manager, Saya reveals to the others that a huge shopping mall will be established in the land he previously sold, which will help bring guests to the park. Takaya from the Amiji development compliments Saya for the feat but also mocks him because the issue with Latifa's condition is yet to be solved, revealing himself as the wizard who cursed her in the first place before fleeing. However, when midnight comes, Saya and the others discover that the huge quantity of animus gathered in the last weeks was strong enough to break her free from the curse, much to everyone's joy. Saya bids farewell to the people of the park. The next day, Saya returns and assumes his post as the manager of Amiji Brilliant Park, claiming that there is still a lot for him to do.